I'm glad you clicked on this video. I hope you watch it because we're talking blown delivery today and I want you to hear me out. I know some of you, especially a lot of you newer viewers, newer collectors, look at the blown delivery and kind of have a mixed opinion on like, what is that? Newer collectors these days love car culture. That's me. Uh, the realistic models were seen from RLC. That's me. The license stuff. That's me. The racing. That's me. I get it. When this blown delivery was announced, and this is why I'm showing it because it's going on sale Tuesday um, on Mattel Creations. It is associated with the Charlotte convention. They do two pink models a year in the RLC. Um, they used to be on sale exclusively at the convention. Now they've kind of merged that. And because of production issues, this is going exclusively on Mattel Creations this time. But they're working on the next pink model for the fall convention. More on that later. Um, Nonetheless, this is the blown delivery, and when it was unveiled, there's a bit of a mixed opinion. You new school collectors like me were saying, I don't know if I like this one. It's kind of plain. I, you know, what's the casting? It's not licensed. Old school collectors, which I think I fall into as well. I'm at least an old collector. Um, we're saying, fantastic. Love this casting. Good to see it back. It's been a while. Uh, it's good to see it getting some love in the RLC. So we're going to talk both. This is a casting that I don't care who you are. If you collect Hot Wheels as a big JDM collector, realistic collector, or you're kind of old school and you like the classic, like, um, you know, just like unlicensed kind of fantasy models. I don't care where, what direction you come from when you collect Hot Wheels. You gotta love the blown delivery. It's just a work of art. I can't tell you what to like and not to like. I just want to see some appreciation for this casting, I think it deserves it. It was designed by Phil Reelman. It has been exclusively in high-end premium. That means RLC, convention, mail-ins. I don't think we've seen it anywhere else, and I think it's been a couple of model exclusives. I don't have all of them. These are the ones that I want. There was a Dream Halloween one, event model from a while ago. Um, but I think this is a casting that is just absolutely stunning that Phil Reelman designed, and it needs the love. Like I said, Phil Reelman, he's designed the drag bus. He's most famous probably for that. He's still designing for Hot Wheels. Been around for a long time. Uh, R34 might be his most popular casting currently that he designed back in 2010, I believe, 2009, 2010. Um, and obviously, the R34 is a big deal. Um, but the Blown Delivery is one of his great works as well, and uh, we want to give it some love today. So I'm just going to walk through it. Like I said, it's been mail-in. Um, it's been uh, RLC. We'll get to. Well, we're going to start with the mail-ins. And as I first talk about, it, I want you to look at the silhouette, and then I'll put it on the turntable. Doesn't this remind you of those beetles? Those beetles with the small heads and the big rear ends. I kind of like it that way. Obviously, the blown delivery is based on what would it be like a Ford delivery, um, but customized in a hot rod styling. Obviously, the big open blown engine. Um, and then the uh, panel van in the back, we'll switch over to the next mail-in. These were both Kmart mail-ins. I couldn't even tell you what year. I don't even have any of these in sequence. Um, but it just has this really cool, heavy, balanced look with the open engine and the big, big rear end, the big panel van in the back. And obviously for a designer, a graphic designer, this is a ton of great real estate. Those are the two mail-ins. I believe those are the only two. And then it's also been a convention model. I have two of them. This was from 2017. I think it was actually at this event. Um, Nationals. I don't remember which. Where was the 17th? I can't even remember. Pittsburgh. I wasn't at this one. I actually just acquired this model. You can see that it's got this ironwork style, which is kind of cool. Uh, looks like it's been scratched or like it has that raw look on the roof and on the side. Like the paint has just kind of worn out or been scratched off. Um, Again, you know, the kind of fun stuff that like Steve Vandervate can do with this kind of real estate. I've also got this one from 2012. I don't even know when the blown delivery started. Um, and I actually bought this recently. And because the blown delivery has not gotten the love that it used to, we're going to talk about it when it was first released, um, some of these are pretty affordable. I think I paid 30 bucks for this. And to me, that is a steal. You can see the, I don't even remember, I've had it for a little bit. This is an old dusty protector, but I'm going to open this one up. This is from the Garden Grove Convention in 2012. I'll show you the numbers. 2370 out of 3000. We just got to open. I'll show you the back there if you want to see it. Some of the information about it. 
10 years ago. Now it's finally free. Cool kind of classic styling here, pinstriping, which looks awesome. I'm a little mixed on the big convention logos on these models, but it's put up top, so I think that looks kind of nice. I like it's a good placement for it. Um, I don't know if it comes across, but even on the top of the engine, you've got uh, some pinstriping, which looks really cool there on the blower. It's five spokes. You'll see the five spokes on most of these releases. Just again, whatever whatever can be designed, they can have some fun with it. So that is the convention. Those are the two convention models that I have. Like I said, there might be some others, but I'm not entirely sure. But let's talk RLC. That's where it has really kind of... Uh, found its place but it's been a while so i'm going to start like i said i don't have these in sequence um, but i'm going to walk through the ones that i've had for a while and opened up these i actually i think i bought when they were put on the rlc at the time the redline club this is one of my favorites i just think it's really really cool you have to like focus in on the specter flame blue on this one hot wheels logo it's done really well in, in a racing style obviously this this uh screams hot wheels racing Logo on the side in blue and red. Then you've got the race team uh, tires. Five spokes look fantastic here. Blown engine, it's really clean, it's really plain, and it is one of my favorites by a mile. I think you guys will appreciate the cleanliness of that one too. Here's the other one. This is the only one that got those like GT style wheels, and I think they look kind of a lace style. And when you put this selection, this was a selections model, we're familiar with selections and the, the uh, collectors choose the casting and then essentially design it. They choose the color, the wheels and everything. And the collectors nailed this one, right? It looks so cool in plain blue. The Spectre Flame hits every portion of it. There's no break. It's like blue from front to back. Selections is super clean. And uh, the Red Line GT wheels are a really, really good fit on this one. And this one I think is also one of the cleanest and one of, pretty, one of the prettiest that have been done. I'll put that one over here as well. A couple others that I think are nice. This one is okay. I mean, I like the deco on it, Redline Transport, pretty clean. But the problem here is the Neo wheels. I'm not a big fan of Neo wheels, and so, you know, I can handle it on some castings. I won't complain. There's enough here with the real riders, but this is, to me, is a real rider casting. Those five spokes, those GT wheels are just what needs to be put on it. In fact, well, we'll talk about this. The pink models typically get Neo wheels. Hot Wheels made the right decision not including them. I know some of you disagree with me, but thank goodness, and we'll get to that pink. And this is the other one, Roadside Refuel and Repair. This might have been the most recent. I love the classic Phillips 66 logo on it, the cleanliness of the deco on the side, the two-tone Spectre Flame, what would that be, copper with the tan. It just looks really nice, and I love when they Spectre Flame the, uh, the fenders as well on this, which looks really really good and that's kind of a cream colored tire too which I really like on that hopefully as we're just going through these there's not much that I can describe on them other than the fact that they're really really pretty uh, but you can get a sense like this is a work of art this is different it's kind of in its own category there's a few castings that hit this the drag bus kind of hits that even though it's a licensed VW it's so different it's so unique and the blown delivery i think the dairy delivery is another one that's another fill casting feels really good at these kind of castings which leads me to this this is the very first blown delivery there was a time when this would have been like i don't know this probably was on the trajectory of the candy striper gasser at one point or the annie freeze silverado and then it just the hype for this model kind of petered out so on one hand that's great because you can get your hands on these now. I, mean, I think I paid about 100 110 for this, and you might even be able to get it for less. But there was a time that it looked like it was going to head up into the threes, fours, fives, six hundreds, and maybe even more if it had stayed on that trajectory. Well, it didn't. It's gone down a little bit. I don't know if that will always be the case because there's going to be a growing appreciation for this, I think. Not because of this video. I just think it's going to naturally happen. Um, but maybe it will. Maybe we'll just settle as like a $75 model, but hopefully some of you will take advantage of this and snag it. There is the back. Like I said, this is a collector's item because it was one of the very first, but to me, I got to have it loose. So there's your numbers. There was 4,000 made. This is number 782. 
And what year was this? 2010 that it was made? I actually feel a little nervous opening this, but I feel like it's the right thing to do for my collection. That's why I bought it. So here is the very first. Ah, <sighs> done. Maybe I'll learn to regret this, but I'd never want to regret opening a model. Check this thing out. Absolutely stunning. Inspector Flame Red, Redline Delivery, Redline Tires, Chrome 5 Spokes, Chrome Blown Engine. It's clean, it's beautiful, and in the long term of Hot Wheels collecting, it's an icon. Of all the models, there's some I like. I like the blue selections and the Hot Wheels racing a little better, but this thing is the iconic model when it comes to the blown delivery. It's the very, very first. I love the detailing, the gold detailing around the back. It's just beautifully, beautifully done. Hopefully you can see all of those details on the turntable. So I rank them. I don't know, maybe selections, Hot Wheels racing, and the red line. But let's talk about the latest one. Like I said, don't sleep on it. I would snag one. I don't know how many are made. They usually make fewer of these. And they kind of stick to the convention numbers. I think once was act, the Datsun was accidentally numbered, and I think it was around 6,000. It's probably up from that, I would assume, but maybe not. Because these were made, I think, in like for the convention. Mattel sent this one to me. That's why I've got it, obviously, right now. There's the back of it. You can get the whole history of the, uh, at least part of the history, the pink, pink Spectre Flame and the uh, blown delivery. This one was done plain. I would assume that partly because most of these pink models are done in a very clean, very plain. There's nothing you need to put on it. And I think because of that, this one becomes unique. I don't like the uh, Neo wheels, but there's one there. We've got it. Some people don't like plain. For me, I love this. The pink itself just stands out. Well, let's just open it up, right? No numbering. So I don't know how many were made. I don't know how quickly this is going to sell out. I'd go for it if I were you, because I think once you have it in person, you're going to appreciate it. And I think, too, then you're going to start going after these, because it'll be nice to put them together. But let's put this on the turntable. All right, now that it's open, yeah, this thing's killer. It is killer. White fenders look fantastic. Using the, They painted the white front. I think that's the first time they've actually changed the color right there on the very front where the engine sits. So that's a nice detail that's unique to this casting. And then of course, just the plain pink is just so clean. And when you've got a color this cool and I, this iconic, why not? There's nothing that needs to be on this. You might disagree with me, but my goodness, I love it. Big pink is what it's called. It's a, I don't think we'll ever see another blown delivery that it's in just plain, plain colors and no deco at all. And to me, that is fantastic. That makes this the most unique piece. And you know what? It might be my favorite now that it's in my hands. The chrome five spokes are perfect. I think this is a total winner. You guys tell me what you think. I always ask. I always want to know. Uh, did Hot Wheels nail it here? Are you gaining at least some appreciation for this casting? I hope so because it deserves it. It is a Hot Wheels icon in my opinion. Everyone should have at least one. Maybe the easiest way to get one is to snag this pink model right now. Thanks, everybody. Bye.